Okay, folks, welcome to the Worksheets on Gas Laws. Uh, today, specifically, we're going to do the introduction, which is a few short questions, uh, kind of more like logic than the math. All right. So our first question is, let's fill these in. Let's look at what, we're, uh, what these things have to do with. Right. A bicycle tire inflates when you pump air into a valve on one side. Well, when you put it in on one side, it goes and it fills the entire tire. Just because you're putting it on, on this end over here, the gas will fill the entire tire. Okay, so what you really want to think of here is that it fills the container, so that would be C. All right. All right, number two, a car is supported on a cushion of air. Well, when you think about a cushion of air, the, the cushion of air is holding the car up. All right, so you could say that is pressure. All right, you could also say, well, it's compressibility because that air is actually being compressed underneath the car. So maybe it's A. So it's kind of both A and D. All right, we'll just stick both of them in there, kind of thinking about what that's doing. All right. An air mattress springs back to its original shape after being pressed. Well, again, you kind of think of that, that's very much compressibility because you're compressing the air and then it's bouncing back, so that would be A. But also, really, you have to think about it exerts pressure, so it's exerting pressure on the inside of the mattress. So I would say that could be either A or D. All right Now, I would kind of focus on A for this one and D for number two, but either one would be okay. Right. Um, a balloon filled with air weighs more. Aha, that's the key. It weighs more than an empty balloon, so that would tell you that's B because gases have mass. Now, very often we tend to forget that. We tend to think that gases are, are light and fluffy and they don't have mass, but they really do. They really do have a lot of mass um, uh, when you think about that. Okay. The color of a gas is uniform throughout the bottle containing it. So if we had, let's say, bromine gas, which is kind of a brownish, yellowish color, um, it would be the same color throughout the entire container. So that would be that the color diffuses through other colors, so it would be E. Okay. All right, uh, here we're looking for things that are true, and if they're not true, we're trying to fix them. So. Although air is a mixture of several gases, it behaves like a single gas. This is very true. Air, as you learned, is nitrogen, it's oxygen, it's carbon dioxide, it's water, it's helium, it's hydrogen, it's all sorts of stuff. Argon. All right. So this is true. All right. Oxygen is diatomic. That's correct. And under similar conditions, its volume is twice that of monatomic helium. Well, similar conditions, you, we might think of that as, for example, STP. And we know that any gas at STP, any gas at STP, takes up 22.4 liters. Okay, so this is wrong, so it would be the same amount of space. Okay, it's always the same under similar conditions. All right. Airbags are used as safety devices in cars because air can be compressed. When you go into it, it should give a little bit, so it should be compressed. You don't want to have it be a rock, okay? So if that was a, a rock bag instead of an airbag and you fell into it in a, in a car accident, um, you're in trouble. So the concept is that airbags can be compressed. All right. Uh, most gases, number nine, most gases can are made up of single atoms. Well, that's certainly true. There are some gases that are made up of single atoms, like helium, and neon, and argon, and krypton, and xenon. That's an X. Okay, X. -E. Well, that's five. Everything else are molecules. So you've got H2, you've got N2, you've got O2, you've got carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, uh, methane gas, CH4, uh, nitrogen dioxide, NO2, uh, sulfur dioxide, SO2, SO2. Uh, it, it, there are bunches and bunches of gas. So actually, most gases are made up of multiple atoms. Uh, so of multiple atoms. Because there are only five that are made up. Uh, one, two, three, four, five that are made up of single atoms. All right. A 
According to the kinetic molecular theory, the collision between gas particles are 100% elastic. That is true. They bounce off of each other, uh, and they do not lose any energy. The pressure of a gas is simply a measure of the kinetic energy of the gas. No, that's not true. That's not pressure. That's temperature. So the temperature of a gas is simply a measure of the kinetic energy of the gas particles. The faster the gas particles are moving, the hotter they are. The slower they move, the cooler they are. And finally, number 12, the volume of a gas is equal to the volume of its container. That is true because a, um, a gas will completely fill its container. Okay, So think of a two-liter bottle that just has air in it. It's full of air. All right, you could push a little bit more in, you could compress it a little bit, it's still full of air. Okay. <clears throat> All right, if the molecular speed of a gas increases, that means its temperature is increasing, the molecules are moving faster, so its rate of diffusion, how fast will it move? Think about that popcorn smell. How fast will it move in hot air versus cold air? It will actually move faster in hot air. So, as the molecular speed of a gas increases, the rate of diffusion will also increase. If the temperature of gas increases, the pressure of a gas, well, assuming that we have a constant volume, if the temperature goes up, okay, then um, if you just think about this, if something gets up, the pressure of the gas will get hotter, um, it, it'll get more. It will also increase. I think of taking a balloon and sticking it uh, in the freezer, it'll get smaller. If you stick it, uh, if you put it somewhere outside in the heat, it'll get bigger. Um, think of this as maybe an aerosol can will explode if you get it too hot. All right, the temperature is increasing, the pressure has to increase. All right, if the molecular weight of a gas increases, so it gets heavier, so if you go from, let's say, helium to oxygen or to krypton, the total volume of the gas will remain the same. Remember that, uh, again, we just talked about this in the previous slide about STP, right? Uh, it doesn't matter what the gas is at the same conditions, uh, it's going to take up the same amount of space. All right, if the temperature of a gas decreases, the pressure of the gas will also decrease. All right, again, think of putting a, a balloon in the freezer, it will actually get smaller. Okay, something you can try that at home if you want, or you could take a two-liter bottle, um, just have air in it at room temperature, and then close the bottle and then stick it in the freezer, and it'll get smaller. All right, you'll actually see the the, the uh, two-liter bottle start to collapse upon itself. <clears throat> All right. Um, when we talked about the kinetic molecular theory, we talked about the volume of gas particles, and we assumed that the volume of the gas part particles was zero. And we said that gas particles tend to be in constant, rapid motion. If they're not, then they will cease to be a gas, they will fall to the ground, they will become a liquid, become a solid, and you can't breathe solid air. It doesn't work that way. You can't breathe liquid air either, right? So the gas molecules are in constant, rapid motion. And the collision between them are completely elastic, meaning they lose no energy. Uh, they constantly bounce off of each other. The temperature of a gas is the measure of the average, and we talked about this in the previous slide, which was kinetic energy of the gas particles. So we measure the energy by the temperature. And gas particles exert no force on one another. They do not attract each other. Now, in reality, gas particles do. But we talk about an ideal gas, and we say that for purposes of what we're doing with kinetic molecular theory, we have to assume that they exert absolutely no force on one another. They exert just a little, but it's just a little. All right. The next one is uh, number 22. Air is a mixture of colorless gases. Which properties of air are instrumental in propelling a sailboat? Well, when you think of a sailboat sailing, what happens is you have, um, oh gee, how can I draw this? You've got your sailboat. All right, and off it is a sail, all right, and the sail has a curve to it. And most people think that the air comes and hits this thing, and it pushes the boat. Well, that's not really true. What's happening is the molecules on this side are spaced further apart 
than the molecules on this side. The molecules are actually closer together, which means there's less pressure on the far side of the sail than there is on this side of the sail. So there's less pressure, kind of like if you think of an airplane. An airplane wing, looking at it from its side, has a hump to it. All right. So there are molecules that are going over the top of the wing, and there are molecules going over the bottom of the wing. And the ones that are on the bottom are closer together. The ones that are on top are further apart. So they lift the airplane up because there's less pressure on top of the wing. Well, that's exactly what's going on here. There's less pressure behind the sail than there is in front of the sail. So it's pulling the sail in this direction. Well, there is a center board underneath the boat, which prevents the boat from going sideways, so the boat can only go forward, so the boat goes forward. Okay. So what is the property of air that's instrumental? It's the fact that there is less pressure behind the wing. So I would say it's all about pressure. Now, use your knowledge of gas properties to explain why the molecular size of an individual gas particle has no effect on the total volume of the gas. Well, if you remember, in our podcast, we talked about you're at Lane Stadium, and you're sitting over here, and there's a P over here, and the distance between you is kind of like that's the relative distance between a molecule of air to another molecule of air. So there's all this empty space in the middle. All right. So let's say you move from here, and you move one seat closer to that P. Does that matter? No. Okay, because they're so far apart anyway. All right. The bottom line is, let's say that this thing was a basketball down here instead of a pea. Does that matter? Not really. They're so far apart that it really makes no difference at all. Okay? So um, that's the concept. Is It all has to do with the size between the particles, the distance between the particles. is so huge compared to the size of the molecule that the size of the molecule really doesn't matter. Okay, folks, we're done with that worksheet. Um, see us if you have any questions. Be happy, happy to help you. Have a great day, Bob.